Hey guys and ladies, good morning, afternoon, evening maybe. We are here on a Wednesday release, Mechanical Tips number three in a series. Today we are going to talk about what I commonly see asked. Why won't my coin mech take money? Why do they get jammed? How do I clean it? Why don't they dispense coins? So let's get on it. We're going to talk about the workhorse in my uh, in my mind of the industry, which is the three tube coin co coin mechs, and there's a lot of them. Many many different models. We're going to start off here with we're going to test for you on our test fixture a 9302 GX. Now this is the MDB version. This is a little bit later than say the single price and the dummy mechs. So as you can see behind us here we have a bending protester. It's great to have if you have a a uh, sizable operation. They're a little bit expensive, upwards of a thousand bucks, but uh, it does so many things and we're going to have a, a dedicated video to just how this works. But for now, we have it connected to our test wire. We push auto test once. It's ready to go. 24 volt or 110, we like to push auto test. There's never a mistake. This is obviously a 24 volt. We waited a second there, so it actually said automatic. Okay, it says test, press escrow lever for test. Very important. If this doesn't work, in a nutshell, you're screwed. Okay, so it said passed. Now, you have to have a dozen of each coin. Okay, it wants us to drop a dozen nickels through first. Six. Rejected one. May have just been a bad nickel. All right, now that's a dozen. Our machine says drop 12 dimes in. Okay. Rejected one, rejected two. All right, we're on ten. Let's see if by chance one of these dimes looks a little rough, the one on the left. We're going to try it again. I took it that time. Sometimes even turning the dime heads or tails in front of you. Okay, then it advances to drop 12 quarters. Here's one thing too, if you can notice these lights that light up. Those are your lower sensors, okay? It's got a low sensor, it's got a high sensor. Well, we're only putting in 12 coins, so when it hits about 9, we'll see here. That's 5, 6, 7. Now watch this light here, the number 3 light, on about 9 when it hits it. Okay, that's 8, 9... Nine lights it up. So the lower sensors here on the nickel dimes and quarters are all good. Okay, good sign. Now we have loaded it up, nickel dimes and quarters. We have a dollar test, which this is not a dollar tube, but whether it accepts it or not, we're going to find out. Okay, it accepted the dollar, even though you heard a clunk that would go to the cash box. It has no place to put it because there's not a, a dollar tube in here. So now we go to our next auto test. Now it kicks them out one at a time. So we know our lower solenoids are working on the nickel. There's 12. Now it goes to the dimes. That's it. The dimes, twelve of them. Whoops! I may be. Oh, I, I was jamming it up because I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't far enough to the to the right of my uh, tape. 
All right, please wait to resume payout. Okay. It will tell us, okay, it accepted 97% and it rejected, obviously, 3%. And then it said no short pay detected. So in other words, it paid out everything it was supposed to pay out, just like that. So this coin mech is seemingly good. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a little bit about disassembly. We always want to shut that off. You should get in the habit of always plugging or unplugging your coin mechs with the power off. If you plug them in, especially the dummy coin mechs, okay, easiest way to figure out if you have a dummy coin mech, <coughs> it's 12 pin, the early ones are 15, but both 24 volt, like this one, this was probably out of a USI snack. This is a 9302L. An LF is the early style, which actually had 15 pins, but this can replace the 15-pin coin mech. You just plug it in. The three empty uh, slots there don't mean anything. So let me move this aside, and we're going to show you a little bit about the flight deck here. People call it different things. They call it the coin acceptor. I call the whole unit either a changer or a coin mech. Okay? So this... Get set up here a little bit better. This is the flight deck for a coin cone. Okay? Many, many different designs, although this design of plug, black plug, this fits... 90% of the coin mechs, okay? It'll fit a 24 volt, it'll fit 110 volt. The voltages mean nothing on the flight deck. These go in all of them. And actually, MDB, they are classified as, let's see if this one has a sticker on it. See, they're classified as 34 volts, okay? People get confused all the time. Well, MDB, 24 to 34 volts. I've even seen 37 listed, but, let me show you. I'm going to take this flight deck out. Okay. 34 volt system. Unplug it. They both have the same plugs. Okay. They're interchangeable. Completely interchangeable. So now what I'm going to do, we are going to disassemble two things. We're going to take apart the flight deck. I'm going to kind of show you what's in it, okay? This is a this cover comes off. It's got some slots here. What I do is I pull it toward me and I slide it down. But unfortunately, it's hard to do with one hand. So I'm going to I have it loose. I pull this towards me. It slides out. Okay? It's just a cover. That should be cleaned. Here is the insides. Okay, you can clean this area. See where it gets dirty. This is the channel. Q-tips down in there. Um, now, the part that predominantly has problems. Okay, see these little slots here, one and two. I better do it this way because I'm right-handed. I just take a small screwdriver. I push down to get this cover off like so okay and holding this out of the way it just slides out got a couple tabs here slide in go back on pop it down but what I'm showing you here this is the workings okay here's where your sensor boards are for the most part you're not going to fix that stuff if that goes bad you've got trouble you may as well replace it it's not cost effective to buy any parts for these because this whole unit we sell them rebuilt for less than 50 bucks. Now, here are your two, two solenoids, okay? This one is actually a little bit sticky. Matter of fact, it's a lot sticky. Okay, this is one I pulled out of our, our core pile. Now, this one here works just like it should, okay? Now, I'm going to take this one off. There's no tools required. They just pull out, they have little tabs, like so, okay? It's 
Go spring. This unit here is going to be 90% of your problems. What's going to happen is this plastic piece from the factory is glued onto this steel shaft and every time a coin goes in, depending on if it's a nickel, dime, or quarter, goes back and forth. So it takes a lot of abuse. A lot of times you open these up or I can shake that flight deck and if it rattles, I know this is broken. Okay? So, let me save my spring so we don't drop it on the floor. Now, why this was kind of in a jam, I'm not quite sure yet. But, you see what happens here? This is your diverter. Okay? This is your for your rejected coins. Okay? It either goes in your cash box or it goes to the coin return, back to the customer. So this has to be nice and free, what I normally do, and I use a foaming glass cleaner. I have just found it's the best. I buy this at Lowe's. I like it better than cleaners that are just a, a liquid spray because you can see the foam. You can see where it is. Okay, I put a little squirt on here. You're not going to hurt anything. It's not going to short anything out. This has a shaft that goes through here. A lot of times they get sticky. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to put this back together and see if we can get that out of its jam. It was just a little sticky. Okay, the plunger goes in and out real nice. It's not sticky. Okay, you see these four little holes here? They go in the four holes there. Be sure your plunger lines up with the shaft. Okay, now see if I just taking that apart. It's free. It should work just perfectly. Now, unfortunately, I didn't see anything in there. However, if this was not depressed all the way down, and all four of those tabs, it's got them on this side, although they don't go anything. I think maybe one of those tabs was not down. Okay? So anyways, both these, nice and free. Okay? Shouldn't be a problem. Whoops, wrong end. Okay, obviously the big part covers the solenoids. So you line up your two tabs over here, just like so. You may have to push down just a little bit, and boom, clicks right back in. We, of course, before we would send this out, would clean it here. This, the same sliding tabs as you see them, both sides, and it just goes click very little effort. So guys, if you've got CoinCo validators, whether it's single price, MDB, dummy mechs that are 12 and 15 pins, if you're not at least carrying this in your truck with the most common black plug for less than 50 bucks, you're doing yourself a disservice because this a lot of times will fix your problem on your coin mech and you do not have to replace the coin mech just this and these are repairable okay last but not least we are going to show you and I was just reading one of our Facebook groups today this morning a lady had a coin mech that was not dispensing coins although she could hear it with a very faint clunk clunk but not a distinctive click okay two screws two screws two more two more Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to run these out, and I am going to show you, whoops, I'm going to show you where those payout actuators are. Whoops, I have a little bit of a, I have a little bit of a big bit here. Rather than hunting for one, I think we'll do it the old-fashioned way. I like power tools for something like this where your screws are going into plastic I strongly recommend you use something very light duty or at least with an adjustment we have both kinds here we have a DeWalt for our big stuff and uh, if a guy's not watching or talking on the phone like I do a lot when I'm working you can strip out the plastic so anyways alright we've taken our four little screws out. Let's see if this is too big again for these. Yep. Okay. 
we're going to take out the four on the bottom here. We'll try and do it on camera here so you get the idea. These just take a small Phillips. It's not a lot of effort. Like I said, it goes into plastic. This is where your coin slides are. Okay. Now you want to be careful you don't lose these screws. That's why I kind of do it on a... All right, there's three of them. I kind of do it on a colored mat so I uh, can find them. Magnetic is always good. All right, now that we have this part loose, very simple. Comes out like so, and the reason I'm kind of removing it slowly is I don't want to drop all the slides out of it. Okay? See those slides? When this is back in, it pushes them up like that, and those come forward. Okay? Now, these. No tools required, okay? They just hook in to those, okay? Those are hooked up to your solenoids underneath, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. So, anyways, see how this is kind of dirty through here? I pulled this one off the off of the uh, bench or off the core pile just to show you that. So what you want to do, you want to clean all this up. Which I'm going to do off camera right now. So when we put this back together, it's nice and clean. Slides, same thing. Once in a while, you could find a broken one. This end, kind of weak right here. One in about 10 or 20, this end is broken off. Or at least it's broken here. And that will cause you problems. This is the quarter slide from going in and out. So let me uh, clean this off camera. We'll be right back at you. Okay, back at you after a little cleaning. We have our plate here, which you should always check for breaks and cracks. This is at the corner of the coin mech down below here. If anybody ever drops a coin mech and it's full and they happen to drop it right on that corner, guess what? It's probably going to pull that screw out and maybe break this off. So you can still get by if it's an emergency and it's the only coin mech you have with making it work, but I recommend you fixing it. So anyways, we have this. We have our little deflector plate. Everybody has their secrets and little tricks. This thing falls out because we're going to tip this whole thing upside down. So what I do is I kind of hold it with my finger. I have a little pre-cut piece of tape. And what I do, just to hold it in temporarily, so it doesn't fall out because it's going to fall out. All right, anyways. What I'm going to do here now is put our slides back together. See the little, the little hole, the little tab? No tools. You just pull that down towards you an eighth of an inch. Slides right in. I don't recommend you take one of these apart in the employee lunchroom the first time unless you've done one okay and as you can see where our cutout is on the plate you can kind of get the idea as to where it goes so I'm gonna I'm gonna set this down so I can see that little guy wants to come out okay so what we do here we very carefully It just snaps into place. It's not hard. I normally start with the the outer four screws. Okay, I did find the correct small Phillips. This is a very weak, probably four volts or something. It doesn't say on it, but I asked the guy at at the hardware store, and I said, "What's a good, you know, cordless screwdriver?" And he said that was the one he used at home. So that's the one I went with. We've been using it just a week, and uh, we like it because it's very controllable as far as the speed. Once we get down to bottoming out the screws, 
Now, we've got four more screws, but while we're thinking about it, we can take our piece of tape off, that little diverter, because guess what? It's anchored in there, it can't go anywhere. So we're going to put these other four in here. And last but not least, I'm going to take the coin tubes out, show you how those work and what's behind them and what can go wrong there. See, they don't have very many threads that go in there, probably goes around about three times, so. Now, see this part here? This is our coin tube assembly. It has notches or latches, two on each side. That's it, no tools. But what you have to do, you have to spread the case like this, okay? Then you get, well, I forgot to do one thing, but I'm gonna show you. Let's do this, let's take off the top first because we unfortunately can't unplug it. You can unjam it without taking these top uh, cover plate off, but I want to show you what's in there. These latches for the flight deck, you just, they go down and then they pull out. Now, this plate has to come out. Normally you need a medium flat screwdriver. Same thing, you separate the case. Looks a little complicated, but it's going to be easier once I get it out. This guy's a little stiff. Okay, so this... Sorry if I'm not completely in the picture. This pulls away from the coin tubes. You kind of back it down, because I have to unplug this as well, but the plug is under this plate. It's not necessarily <coughs> excuse me, the best design, but See these two tabs? Okay, those just fit up in the side. So, here's your plug, ribbon cable, fragile. Okay, if you're not careful, you can screw it up. Anyways, here is your coin tube assembly. See the boards? There are sensors behind here. Um, I think I'll take this board off. This is not something you're probably going to repair, okay? Oh, uh, you know what? This is... No, it's not It's not taped. Okay, sometimes they're taped from the factory. A little tougher to get off. So anyways, once again, no tools. Just has tabs. Now, this is delicate, too. See here? See all these colored sensors? Some are, what? Some are clear. Some are red, okay? When these go back in... Don't leave this sitting out overnight on your bench and have your cat running around because you end up with one of these bent over and you don't notice it. They all have to be straight because they're all going to fit back in these little holes. See all these little slots? Every one of them, before I put that on, a lot of times people say they can't dispense their nickels, dimes, quarters, okay, those are the little switches, but they activate a little touch screen here, okay? Well, guess what? After a zillion times of people pushing those buttons, this does wear out and there's really no fixing it, but how many times do you have to dispense coins out of there? For the most part, they go in there, they stay in there. They are dispensed through the bottom, so very carefully going to do here is all these have to line up. I start at the bottom and I just be sure everything falls into place. See them? Same with the top. Our latches lined up. Doesn't matter. Either start with the top or the bottom. This is back together. Okay? While we have it apart, this is your board assembly. Once again, there's not a lot you're going to fix in there. Occasionally, one of these driver transistors goes bad, but not often. Those power 
your solenoids, okay? These are strong solenoids. If they're going clunk clunk and not a hard click click, it's not a bad solenoid. These are good or bad. It's the gum or the syrup in the coin slides, okay? So, let's do a little reassembly before we wrap up. This is not the easiest if you've never done it, but keep in mind, you line these three coin tubes up. They're recessed. It goes in, I guess that's about an eighth. And while you're doing that, you also have to spread the case. Okay, you feel it go click, click. Tabs are in the notch. Tabs are in the notch. Okay, now, very carefully, you have to plug this in, ribbon cable. Make sure you don't bend a pin over. Okay, now comes into your cover. Some of these covers had a little tab here, a little tab here. So you had to go down and in. This one is not like this. This is a little bit later model. A lot of times what happened is those tabs would break off because guys were too rough. Anyways, little shield here just in case a coin ever gets behind here. It deflects it away. So this is relatively easy. However, first time If you hear that click, 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 now you look, notch is in, notch is in, same here, notch and notch, keep in mind, built in the good old USA, okay, now we're almost ready. These clips that hold the flight deck in, let's see if I can show you how this goes in. Top first, I'll move my big hand, okay, top first, now. Hear that click? Let's do this one. Top first, you kind of have it down at a 45. Okay? I may have the cover hitting. It's a lot easier to do with your correct hand, and I'm not left handed. So, anyways, you get it in that far, okay? It's not ready to hold anything. You have to kind of push in. Once again, I'm, I'm wrong-handed. Okay, so there we go. That's going to hold your flight deck back in. Okay, let's put the flight deck in. Believe it or not, contrary to what some people say, this can be unplugged and plugged in when your machine has power. It doesn't hurt it. Okay, some people will shudder, and uh, if you're one of those, hey, comment down below. I've never seen one blow up. There's not power going to it at that moment. So now, let's just go back to our tester here. Show you that we put it back together correctly. I do have a holder for my coin mech, but as you can see behind, it is uh, occupied. So I'm just going to do a real short test with a couple of three coins per. Guys, if you have a vending machine in the shop, um, I am going to make a long MDB cord. To where, let's say your soda machine is to the left of your bench like mine. But it's, you know, you need a six foot cord to hook this up to test it on the bench. I am going to make probably 6, 8, 10, 12 foot cords that are just MDB extensions, okay? So you will be able to test your coin mechs on your bench and if you don't have one of my handy testers you can have a machine that's nearby, okay? First test you can hear that beep, I hope, that was our escrow return they call it, I call it a coin return, okay? One, two, we're going to put three in we're going to cheat it, advance to the next test for dimes. We're going to put three in. Three. Next test. Three quarters. Last test will be a dollar coin. Okay. 
it registered the dollar even though it dropped to the cash box now if something comes to mind I'll just put out there those two dimes and that one nickel that it did reject that plunger being sticky or a little bit stuck in there that was most likely the reason that it rejected those couple coins so anyways we go to the end of the test it's going to give us our nine coins out seven eight nine okay here they are laying on the bench we know we had a successful test so that's basically guys the coin mech the workhorse of the industry they're not expensive if you have any mdb machines you know i, I think we have them on sale at the time of this video for less than 85 dollars i strongly recommend you get one carry it with you even if you have say a, a BevMax 4 and you have a, a fancy coin mech because it came with it that cost $500 when it was new something like a 7000 series uh, 7512 is what this is this is a direct replacement same cord I don't know if you can see these cords but they're both MDB so if this one was to fail and you were in a pinch put that one right in its place until you can get your your five tube dollar coin you know newfangled fancy one uh, repaired and brought back so anyways guys I hope that helped you a little bit and uh, I will put some links to these coin mechs below there in the comments and if you have any questions we certainly welcome them we will soon have a video on the Mars the old black Mars coin mechs both MDB and dummy mechs and single price we will show you how to tune these because when people say my MEI or my Mars doesn't take quarters anymore well but it still takes nickels and dimes what that means is it's out of tune they don't have to be tuned often some go 20 25 years but we will cover this next guys for now we appreciate you being here if you haven't subbed please do doug at doug's world tour out